Hello, everybody. Uh, you're very welcome to Music Network's Music Capital Scheme 2020 Award One Information Session. My name is Deirdre Moynihan, and I'm the Programs Manager at Music Network. And for the next, I suppose, 35 minutes or so, I'm going to be telling you about Award One of the Music Capital Scheme. And we'll be covering um, an overview of the guidelines, uh, talking a little bit about the application process and the application form, and hopefully give you um, some very useful information and tips, which will enable you to start preparing your applications for this scheme. Uh, before I begin, um, two things to mention. Uh, the first of these is, I just mentioned the guidelines there, and if you haven't downloaded the guidelines already, um, you may want to do this, and um, because I will be referring to them as I'm talking through throughout this session. And so we're going to post a link um, in the stream, the comments stream below this video. So you can download the guidelines directly there if you would like to do so now. Um, and the other thing to mention is that, so at the end of the session, um, if you'd like to post your questions as we go along, you know, if anything occurs, I'll uh, look at these questions here um, at the end of the session and I'll answer as many as I can and certainly ones that hopefully um, if there's anything I haven't covered in the session. So, um, yeah, I think we'll get started. I'm just going to share my screen. So just bear with me for a minute. I think we're good to go there. So, as I said, um, I'm going to be talking about the Music Capital Scheme 2020 Award One uh, in this information session. And the Music Capital Scheme is managed by Music Network and it's funded by the Department of Media, Tourism, Arts, Culture, Sport, and the Gaeltacht. So, what is the Music Capital Scheme? Well, essentially, it's a scheme which um, enables you to receive support for the purchase of musical instruments. Now you can also supply, um, apply for maintenance and repair costs, but primarily it is for the purchase of musical instruments. Now, there are two distinct awards to the Music Capital Scheme. Um, tonight, as I said, I'll be talking about Award 1, which relates to non-professional performing groups. Award 2 relates to professional, um, individual professional performing musicians, and I will be speaking about that tomorrow night if you'd like to tune into this channel at 6pm. But tonight it's all about Award 1, non-professional performing groups. And the total funding available for Award 1 in 2020 is €162,500. Now the application process, it's an online application process. So if you visit musicnetwork.ie, you can download the guidelines there. Now, some of you may have just downloaded them from the stream below, as I mentioned here before I started. Um, once you download the guidelines, you'll be able to, um, I suppose, inform yourself about the award, but then you can set up an account from Music Network's website. Uh, once you set up your profile, you can then log in and start to fill in your application form. Now, you can fill in and complete the application form in stages, which is really useful because you might, first of all, just like to go to the um, application form, read through all the questions, get an overview of it, and then go back and fill it in in stages as and when you have each um, section prepared. So it's really useful. You can save a draft as many times as you want. And then when you're ready and happy with the application, uh, there is an apply button, which you can click then. Um, a key piece of information, which I'm going to be mentioning a number of times uh, during this uh, session, and that is the deadline for receipt of applications. So uh, the deadline is actually 2 p.m. on Tuesday, the 13th of October, 2020. And it's really important that you remember that time and date, because after that time on the, ter on the 13th, it won't be possible to submit your application. So. Um, what I would advise is, if you can, to prepare your application in advance and to submit it at least the day before, because you don't want to find yourself on the morning of the 13th. Um, if anything happens with your internet or anything like that, you know, it could be a very stressful situation. So I would recommend trying to um, submit your application prior to the 13th. But that is the deadline there, 2 p.m. on Tuesday, the 13th of October. So we come to the priorities of Award 1, and you can see three counties listed there, Leitrim, 
Limerick and Monaghan. And due to a low number of successful applications from these three counties in previous rounds of the Music Capital Scheme, um, in 2020, uh, funding has been allocated to deliver additional supports to applicants from these three counties and also to ensure that high quality applications from these three counties will be prioritized in 2020 um, in award one of the music capital scheme and the department has allocated additional funding for this prioritization so another area of priority then relates to rapid areas and rapid areas essentially what that means is if your organization um, has you know if your organization's primary focus relates to working in areas that are designated uh, government rapid areas so working with people in these areas then these applications have been strategically prioritized for support as well in 2020 and now if you're unsure if um, you're working um, with people based in rapid areas you can actually go to it's a very useful link and it's in the guidelines here which i'm i won't call out the full link now but if you have downloaded a copy you'll see the link and if not you can check it out later but it's on maps.pubble.ie and if you click on that link it will bring you to a map of ireland and then on the right hand side of that uh, page you'll see a pop-up box and there'll be um you'll be able to select administration is it administrative boundaries and then if you scroll down there's a list there if you scroll down you'll see a tick box beside rapid and if you uh, tick rapid it will show all areas of the map of ireland uh, which are designated rapid areas so you'll be able to see very quickly if you are working primarily in one of those areas now who can apply to the uh, award one of the music capital scheme well now turning to page two of the guidelines there is a, a table on page two and it lists um, many different types of organizations and performing groups that can apply to award one of the scheme and it's quite extensive you could be anything from a pipe band or a traditional group a jazz ensemble a pop group you might be a, a, samba, a samba band or a choir a resource organization a venue it's really quite extensive you might even be a primary school or a post primary school um, where applications relate to non-core curricular activities. So it's really very extensive. So do check out that table and see um, if your organization or your performing group um, relates to one of these ensembles. And you know, if you're not sure, of course, do give us a call um, if you need any advice on that. So um, the other thing to mention, well, there's a couple of things to mention. Um, your organization or group must be based in the Republic of Ireland. Now you can be performing in any genre, so there's no restriction in terms of genre. And just the last thing to mention is that instruments must be used for rehearsal and tuition, so lessons, and um, but also very much for performance. And the performance um, aspect is a great way to show the benefit of uh, these instruments to the wider community. So it's really about people having the opportunity to hear you perform on these instruments. And so it's about community engagement and all of that. And in terms of performance, it's not limited to what we might consider formal performance, a, a formal concert performance. It could be any type of performance. So it could be an informal gathering, it might be a charity event, it could be a, a street event, it could be, it could be performing at a competition where there are people listening to your band or your group performing. So it's very open in that sense. But just to remember that the instruments must be used for both rehearsal and performance. Now we come to the conditions of the award. And so there are a number of conditions, as you'd expect. Uh, the first of these, and I've mentioned this already, is that your group uh, organization must be based in the Republic of Ireland. And you must also um, regularly use the instruments in the Republic of Ireland. Um, the second condition there, a very important one, uh, you can apply for up to 75% of the instrument costs. And essentially what that means is if you are applying for, say, a student instrument that is valued at 100 euro, you can apply to the scheme for 75 euro of that cost. 
And there is a maximum amount you can apply for, and the maximum amount is 18,750, and that is 75% of 25,000. Now, that's, uh, that would be a, a very big award, and of course, many people will be applying for, for less than that, and um, it's just to let you know that there is a maximum amount for which you can apply. Then you must demonstrate how the remaining 25% will be funded. And another thing to mention is it relates to constituted organizations. So instruments, they must be owned by a constituted organization, which operates as a not-for-profit, a voluntary or a charitable organization. And now just to mention that in the case of larger nationwide, for example, organizations where you might have a head office and then your group might be a branch of this organization. In this case, the constitution of the head office may suffice. The next point um, in relation to a condition of the award relates to organizations who are delivering programs for children and young people under the age of 18 and or vulnerable adults. And in this case, you are required to have adequate protection and welfare policies and procedures in place. And a key thing to mention here is that those policies and procedures must relate specifically to your organization or to your branch of a larger organization. So they must be for your branch and adopted and implemented by your branch. And for example, like the designated liaison person would need to be a member of your branch. So just to make that distinction there. Moving on, um, another condition of the award is that you have a clear policy for instrument use and ongoing training and support of players. So this would relate to your tuition program and you know having uh, good quality tutors to um, help people learn on the instrument. So outlining that program of lessons and rehearsals that you that you might offer uh, during the year. And finally. Uh, you're asked to outline where the instruments will be stored, so that's provision of housing. You'll also be asked who will insure them, so you'll be giving details of the insurance policy under which they'll be covered. And then maintenance and repair, that's really your plan to maintain and repair the instruments. And some instruments will require, of course, more extensive levels of maintenance. So that maintenance and repair plan will, of course, be tailored to what is applicable to the instruments you're applying for. Now, before I talk about ineligible applicants and ineligible applications, I just want to mention on page three of the guidelines, there are two very useful tables at the top there, and they relate to eligible and ineligible expenditure. And so the first table, um, for example, if your core application is you're applying for, we'll say, three violins and four violas, you can apply for shoulder rests or strings for those instruments. If you're applying for wind instruments, you can apply, for example, for reeds for those instruments, or if it's percussion, you can apply for drum heads or drumsticks and, and brushes. So they're examples of eligible expenditure under the music capital scheme. And there's also lists of or a table which lists ineligible expenditure. And that, for example, would be things like music stands, um, sheet music, travel expenses, uh, shipping expenses, tuition fees. These are examples of items that are ineligible to apply for. So just check that table if you're unsure. And as always, give us a call or an email as well if there's anything that isn't clarified by the table. So ineligible applicants. Um, so music education partnerships that are in receipt of music generation funding at the time of the application deadline are not eligible um, to apply. If you are a for-profit company, you are also ineligible. Individuals are not um, eligible to apply for this award. And I mentioned earlier, if you are an individual professional musician, there is another award under the Music Capital Scheme Award 2, which you may be interested to explore and investigate. Um, if your organization is based outside of the Republic of Ireland, you would be ineligible. And um, of course, if you were a previous awardee who has not complied with the award conditions, you wouldn't be eligible to apply for the award. And then reasons why your application may be ineligible. Well, probably one of the most obvious is if the submission is after the deadline. And again, 2 p.m. 
Tuesday, the 13th of October, 2020, a really key date to remember. Um, if you're missing essential support materials, so I'm going to talk about essential support materials in the next slide, and there are seven essential support materials, and you do need to submit all seven essential support materials, so do keep that in mind. If your application doesn't comply with the award conditions, um, in that case, your application will be ineligible, of course. Another reason it could be ineligible is if the requested amount exceeds 75% of the total instrument cost. Now you can apply for less than 75% support, but you cannot apply for more than 75% support. And another point, which is important, um, relates to if you have already purchased the instruments, you cannot apply for funding retrospectively uh, under this scheme. So they need to be in, you can have identified the instruments that you would like to purchase, but you can't apply for the funding if you have already purchased them. And finally, if your application form is incomplete or the finance information is incomplete or incorrect, then the application would also be deemed ineligible. So they're just things to watch out for when you're filling in your application form and preparing the content. Now, as I mentioned, there are seven support materials and uh, these are clearly outlined in the guidelines on page four of the guidelines. Uh, the first of these is the history of the organization. So this would be to upload a document kind of detailing the development of the organization uh, since it was founded. Um, just to say, if, for example, your application relates to instruments uh, for a non-core curricular um, activity in a school, um, you could uh, provide the history of the music program in the school in that instance, rather than the history of the school itself. Um, a list of members of your board or committee and also stating the positions that each uh, member of the board holds. Um, a list of instruments owned by your organization. So if your organization currently owns instruments, um, you would be asked to list these instruments and um, state you know, the type of instruments, the state of repair and the approximate lifespan of the instrument. And that could be relevant to your application. If, for example, you're applying for um, um, uh, instruments that would repair your existing instruments. So you might say that the state of repair is that you expect them to last another two months and then you're going to have to apply um, to, to purchase new instruments. So it's it, it could be very, very re relevant to list uh, the instruments owned by your organization. Moving on then to the declaration form. And the declaration form is something that you can download from the Music Network website. The form basically confirms that your organization accepts all conditions related to the award and that it is compliant with best practice in relation to your governance documentation and procedures. So it's a really important document and it must be signed by two members of your board, by the chairperson and the treasurer. And if, if that person is the same person, it would be the chairperson and perhaps the secretary or another board member. Moving on then to audio and video recordings. Um, you can submit up to three audio files, or if you prefer, you can submit links to audio and video files. And these are really important because it's a chance to uh, showcase and highlight the work of your organization and show what you do. So be selective in what you submit and you know, sh make sure you submit the best uh, of, of what you do. And, Another thing to say is if you're submitting a long file and you want the panel to listen to, we'll say, song number three in this video, put in the time that you want the panel to start listening um, from so that they go directly to uh, the piece that you feel really showcases your group or your organization in the best light. And in addition to submitting the three audio files or the links to audio and video files, you'll be at, you, you are asked to provide a Word document. And the Word document should just outline the recording details and any relevant information like what the name of the piece is, who is playing in it, if you want to um, include a start point, for example. So all of that information goes into the accompanying Word doc. And just one thing to mention, 
when you are submitting links to audio or video files online, now it might be to a, a YouTube video or a SoundCloud file, just make sure that the link is a public link or if it is a private link, make sure it's accessible by the panel. So in that case, you know, provide the password. Sometimes, you know, the, the links are inaccessible and it's a real shame because the panel can't then listen to your audio. So just be careful to make sure it's either a publicly accessible file or that you provide the access details, if not. Moving on to the sixth essential support material. And this is a really important one. Well, they're all very important, obviously, but this relates to the mandatory number of quotations for instruments for purchase. And what this essentially means is that all applications to the Music Capital Scheme Award One must comply with public procurement guidelines. And so there is no leeway on this and you must adhere to this in terms of the required number of uh, quotations. So you'll see there in point one, if the overall cost of the instruments you're applying for is under 5,000, you're required to submit two quotations per instrument. So what that essentially means is if your group is applying for four we'll say stringed instruments, if they're applying for a violin, viola, cello, and double bass. And if these instruments, the total cost is less than 5,000, then you need to supply two quotations for the violin, two for the viola, two for the cello, two for the double bass. If the overall cost of those four instruments is, for example, 8,000, then you're into the next bracket and you're required to supply three quotations quotations for each of those instruments. So three for the violin, three for the viola, etc. Now we're often asked what constitutes a quotation. So this might be an, an email or a letter from an instrument dealer or maker where they outline the details of the instrument and also you know include the cost of the instrument. In the case of, for example, a mass produced instrument where you may be um, purchasing it from a music website like Thoman or something like that, you can browse to the page on the website where it details the, um, I suppose, the, the specifications or the details of the instrument and the cost and take a screenshot of that and save it as a, a JPEG file or something like that. And you can submit that as a quotation. One thing to say is if you are purchasing from a dealer or um, from a website that is in a non, uh, 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 not in a euro currency, um, you need to convert the amount to euro for the financial section. So just to remember that, and sometimes that can cause confusion um, if people forget to do that. And um, so do convert all prices to euro uh, for clarity. Um, another thing just to mention is that shipping costs, I did briefly mention it earlier, in ineligible um, expenses and shipping costs are ineligible. So if your quotation includes shipping costs in the final price, you need to deduct that for your calculations for uh, the financial section. Um, then the final support material relates to the biographies of the artistic personnel in your organization. And that can be, I suppose it's the key artistic personnel in your organization. It could be an artistic director, uh, assistant artistic director, the conductor, um, key tutors, key uh, teachers who may teach regularly or may come to teach at, if a summer school, for example, is a primary focus for you. Um, so just include a short biography um, regard, uh, for each of the artistic personnel. Now, sometimes we receive kind of one line just saying, you know, Shane O'Flaherty is the clarinet teacher. And you need to provide a little bit more information than that for the panel to assess, I suppose, the, the quality of the tuition program. So just make sure to include a reasonably reasonable length biography for all of the artistic personnel. And then finally, in relation to support materials, once you've submitted those seven, there is the option to submit additional files and up to 10 additional files can be submitted. You're not obliged to submit them, but you can if you like. For example, they could include publicity materials, reviews or adju adjudication sheets. For example, if your, if your band was in a competition and it got a glowing review from the adjudicator, you know, that's a really good endorsement. Um, of your uh, groups uh, playing, for example, or it might be a review of a concert or something like that. So they're all really useful things to include. 
And another thing might be confirmation of partnership funding if it's already secured. So written confirmation of that might be something you'd consider uploading as an optional support material. Now we're on to the application process. So the application process, as I mentioned earlier, it's online and you access this by going to musicnetwork.ie. Once you've downloaded the guidelines, uh, there's a link where you can create an account on the application portal. It's a very simple process. And once you've created uh, the, uh, your profile, you can begin filling in the online application form. As I said, you can do this in stages, uploading essential and op optional support materials as and when you have them prepared. So you can keep coming back to it. You're not under pressure to do it all at once. Um, once you're happy with the application, make sure to submit it before the deadline, Tuesday the 13th of October at 2 p.m. Now, one really important thing to mention is that once you've submitted your application, you will receive an automated confirmation email. So do check your inbox um, to make sure you've received that. If it hasn't arrived shortly after you have submitted your application, do check your spam folder or your junk folder just to make sure it hasn't gone there. That can sometimes happen. If it isn't in any of those folders, do get in touch with us because it may mean that there has been a glitch on, on your end or our end um, and uh, just to make sure uh, that the application has been submitted. So if you don't receive the confirmation email, do get in touch with us at the details listed um, on our website. And then finally, just to say that everyone, successful and unsuccessful applicants, will receive results of the assessment by email in December. So again, that's another time to remember to check your account and watch out for the email from Music Network. So just to cover briefly the application form. So the application form is in six sections. The first section is uh, really contact details <clears throat> relating to your organization. So very short um, factual questions. Section two relates to your organization's structure and governance. And here you'll be asked to give a description of your organization and outline how its governance um, how, it's, how it's governed and how it's constituted. Um, you'll be asked to confirm the content of your governance documentation, along with, if it's applicable, your child and vulnerable adults policies and welfare procedures. And you, you're asked to outline that they're um, in line with best practice. And so you won't be submitting these documents, but Music Network will reserve the right to request the documentation at any point in the future. In addition, in section two, you'll be asked to um, outline how your organization is funded. Now, this could be through tuition fees or sponsorship or box office or charitable events, anything like that. And also, you'll be asked regarding public funding of the organization. Um, here as well, you upload the history of the organization and the declaration form, both of which we referred to earlier. Section three is um, relating to your organization's activities and members. Um, just to a question we often get asked is the difference between members and participants, uh, because both are referred to in this section. And so core members would be those attending um, tuition, for example, or, or rehearsals or whatever it is on your weekly or monthly basis. But you might also run um, summer schools, for example, or you know Easter weekends where people um, sign up for those particular activities. So they'd be considered participants in the broader offering of activities that uh, you program during the year. And um, I suppose this section is a real opportunity to elaborate on the activities of your group and highlight, you know, highlight the work of your group or organization. So, you know, you'll be listing the classes you offer, maybe performances, competitions, charity work, all of those things. And there is an opportunity here as well to list recent performances and upcoming performances and things like that, just to, I suppose, outline the type of activities and the extent of activities that your group or organization undertakes uh, during the year. And here as well is where you upload the artistic bios, which we mentioned earlier. Section four covers the, the proposed instruments for purchase. So you'll be listing the instruments here and listing the cost in euro relating to each instrument. You'll be uploading the mandatory quotations here and outlining how you'll fund the balance of the 25%. Um, now that uh, funding of 25%, you know, you just need to outline how you're going to do it. Um, it. It can be projected, you know, it can be box office or 
tuition fees for the year ahead or whatever, but you need to, it does not necessarily have to be confirmed and in your bank account right at this time, but you need to outline the plan as to how you're going to fund this additional 25%. Um, and then finally, um, it's also an opportunity, this section to demonstrate the need your organization or group has for the instruments and the impact that these instruments could have on the activities of your organization. So it would be things like, you know, having these instruments, would it enable you to um, increase the number of activities you do? Would it allow you to attract new members or to help existing members, you know, develop as players? Um, so it's all that type of thing. It's a real chance to, um, you know, to make a case for, you know, how important these instruments would be to your organization. Um, and there are two other things that you uh, cover here in section four. You, this is where you outline your teaching plans and also where you refer to the housing and insurance and repair of the instruments. Section five then relates to the support materials and there's a checklist here of the seven essential support materials. Now you'll have uploaded them earlier in the earlier sections, but this is a reminder. So it's a useful reminder that you have uploaded them earlier and you can also upload your optional materials here. And finally, section six, as you can see there, it's an optional section and it's really a chance if you'd like to offer feedback to Music Network regarding the scheme or the application process or anything like that, we're always grateful to hear your thoughts and to um, receive your feedback. So that's an optional section that you can uh, complete if you so wish. Very briefly, just to show you the type of ways that you'd be asked to input information, it's very straightforward. You can see the first there, 1.3, that's just a drop down menu. And there is also yes, no buttons, very simple there on the right, 4.8. You'll see a text box there in 3.7. And um, there's a limit there at the bottom. It's hard to see a little bit, but uh, there's a limit of 200 words there. So different text boxes will have limits. So do adhere to them because you'll need to go back and edit them. Uh, to be within the word limit before you can submit your application. And then there are some uh, number and email address boxes on the right. Again, very easy. Um, just to give you one example of how you would upload materials, 3.7 there is an example of uploading the audio and video recordings. And you can see there under the question, um, it lists the acceptable file types. So you can see that in relation to audio, the acceptable file type there would be MP3 rather than a WAV file or anything like that. But if you don't have MP3 files, you can, as I said, um, upload a Word doc and um, list links to audio or video files um, as examples of your audio and video recordings. And then just to mention that on the right hand side there of 3.7, you can see there's quite a bit of text and these are useful hints and tips um, that are shared with you in relation to a lot of the questions as you go through the form. And, uh, you know, they ask, act as a reminder, I suppose, and maybe uh, some additional information as you're considering that particular question. So do always read those hints on the right hand side because they can be really useful um, when you're preparing the content. So I'm just going to take a sip of water here. And finally, this is the bit you'll all be delighted uh, to get to. Um, at the bottom of the form, you can see there on the right, you will be able to save drafts of the uh, application form. But once you're completely and 100% happy with it, you can agree to the terms and click apply. So just make sure you're totally happy with it before you click apply because you can't edit the form once you have submitted it. Now the assessment procedure. Um, so there are eight selection criteria. And these are really important because these eight criteria are the assessment criteria which the panel will use to assess all of the applications. So do keep these in mind. I won't read through them there, um, but they're really important um, to, I suppose, make your case and to submit a really good quality application. So keep those eight criteria in mind. As I said, they're equally weighted. So they're all of equal importance. Um, and that is, yeah, that's something uh, that's uh, key when you're preparing your application. Now, the conditions of the award. Um, so this relates to successful applicants. Um, as I said, all applicants will receive notification in December. And whether you're successful or unsuccessful, um, if you're unsuccessful, you can, of course, ask us for feedback 
on the um, application and we will be happy to send you feedback and you can apply for this feedback up to two months from you know when you receive the email. So do, do consider doing that as it can be useful for preparation of future applications. And then for successful applicants, um, you'd be asked to write to Music Network within two weeks to arrange drawdown of the award and you would provide your bank detail and tax clearance details if the award is over 10,000. Um, now, where we say there, any proposed change to the instrument for purchase must be approved by Music Network. So what that would relate to might be, for example, in the, the group of instruments that you had applied for, supposing you had applied for uh, three concertinas and one, you, you had a, a tutor lined up to teach those concertinas. And for example, that tutor could no longer take up the role. And instead you had the opportunity to work with an amazing accordion player and the young or any age <laughs> uh, people, members of your organization were interested in learning accordion instead. You know, we could talk about that. And, and if there's a clear rationale for a change in the instrument for purchase, you know, we're very happy to discuss that and work with you on that. Um, receipts must be submitted to Music Network within three months of receiving the award. You will also be asked to provide annual reports, and this is just detailing the use of the instruments and the impact it has on your organization. They're fairly concise reports, so it's just, I suppose, to see how you're getting on really and to um, see, uh, you know, the, as I said, the impact uh, the instruments have had on the activities of your organization. Um, you will be also asked to acknowledge Music Network, uh, the Arts Council and the Department of Media, Tourism, Arts, Culture, Sport and the Gaeltacht in all biographies and promotional materials for a period of three years after you receive the award. And you'll receive um, the logos and the template wording for that. So when you are um, informed about uh, the success of your application and then Finally, just to say that if you, you know, if you're not in a position to be compliant with the conditions of the award, the award is then refunded and it is added to the fund for the subsequent year. So another organization will benefit from that money. Um, yeah, finally, we're near the end of the session. So just to outline, outline some tips for applicants. So it may sound very obvious. It's like something, the advice we'd have been all given in school many years ago to read the exam paper. It's read the Music Capital Scheme guidelines for your award. Really important, as I said, it may sound obvious, but just make sure you really understand all aspects of it so you can prepare the best application and hopefully ensure a successful outcome to the application. Another key thing is do not assume the assessors are familiar with your work. So don't assume, you might be a very well-known group, but don't assume the panel members know your work. Some may, some may not. So you should always assume that you need to start from scratch when you're doing any application in that respect. And um, read the notes for each question on the application form. They were those notes and tips I referred to on the right-hand side of each question as you go through the application form. Um, information should be clear, concise and relevant. I suppose that really is to highlight the fact that, you know, the, the time for the panel to assess all of the applications, it, it is limited. And so you want to be as, as clear and concise as possible and be selective in the information you submit. Again, I'm like a broken record, submit in advance of the deadline, 2 p.m. Tuesday, the 13th of October, 2020. And um, just to say, I mentioned earlier, if you had any questions, um, which I will come to them now and uh, look at them, uh, any of the ones you've posted on the comments below. Um, you can also see we have frequently asked questions in the Music Capital Scheme 2020 Award 1 guidelines, so do check those out as well. And if you have a question that occurs to you after this session finishes, you can email capitalscheme at musicnetwork.ie or phone 0830 955956 and we will respond to your questions and we'll be delighted to hear from you and happy to help in whatever way we can if you get in touch. Um, before I'm going to look at some questions now, but before I do, um, I just wanted to mention two things. Uh, the first of these is uh, that there's a really um, great uh, seminar um, being presented on Thursday morning. It's a free training sem seminar for non-professional music groups um, relating to areas 
um, which would be very useful as an applicant to the music capital scheme, but also um, very helpful just in general terms um, for the development of any organization. We have three wonderful experts uh, speaking at this seminar. It's on Zoom. It's between 10 and 1 on Thursday, this Thursday, the 17th of September. Um, at 10 o'clock, we have uh, Developing Your Group's Governing Document with Sheila Cahill. At 11, uh, Strategic and Artistic Planning with Liz Doherty. And at 12, Creation of Recordings with Mairead O'Reilly. So three really useful topics there that um, do feel free to sign up to this. Um, we're going to have information about this on our website. Uh, that we may also post a link to that uh, on the comment stream below this video here. It'll be also on our, our um, social media. So do check that out and sign up for that uh, seminar, which is happening on Thursday between 10 and 1. And um, also just to say, if you or anyone you know is interested in award two of the Music Capital Scheme, uh, do uh, log on here again tomorrow night and we'll be talking about that award. So that's for individual professional performing musicians. Um, so I'm going to, uh, excuse me now while I check, uh, I'm going to look at uh, questions that have come in and see where we're at. Um, uh, okay. So are there any allowances this year to facilitate groups getting equipment for online rehearsing and performances? So it's really if that is the method uh, by which you will be rehearsing and performing and, you know, you, you would make a case for that is the need you have and, and um, that is the intended use of the instruments, I suppose it might depend on what that equipment is. I don't have any more information than that, so I couldn't answer the question fully, but um, certainly uh, get in touch with us directly at capital scheme at musicnetwork.ie. And if you want to outline further what you're referring to there, I mean, if it's not in the ineligible expenditure um, items, it could certainly be something uh, that you might be able to apply for. But I think the easiest, or I suppose it makes most sense to have all the facts uh, to answer that question. So do get in touch and send us um, what you're thinking of and we'll be happy to get back to you on that. Um, there might be one more question coming in. I'm just seeing uh, typing going on here. So I'm just going to wait a second. I'll have a little sip of water while I wait. So as I said, I really would recommend you sign up for the free training training seminar on Thursday. Um, if you need any more information about that, do log on to our website. Um, now there's another question coming in. Oh, something I've addressed already, so I leave that. Well, look, I think uh, hopefully uh, the information session provided you with um, you know, all of the information you need to get started. As I said, uh, we will be delighted to hear from you if you have any additional questions and uh, hopefully see some of you tomorrow night or friends of yours who may be interested in uh, award two. So uh, I guess bye for now, get in touch uh, through our website and through the contact details on the guidelines and um, best of luck with your applications. <laughs>